Thanks for sticking around, everybody. No. Our first feature is Pam Miller. I've known her for about 10 years, maybe 11. And uh, she is a very brilliant, intelligent, satirical, often satirical uh, poet. And um, let's see, she's just been, she's been published widely. She has like tons of chapbooks over the last, I think, 20 years, is it, or something like that? And anyway, she's gonna, sh you know, as she has before, she's gonna show us a really good time. Give it up for Pam Miller. It isn't so bad. Okay, so I gotta check my timing. You do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, can't see the audience though. Anyway, um, believe it or not, this is the first time I've um, I've ever read here. So. Um, so I thought maybe I better um, officially introduce myself by reading this. Um, is this called? Uh, Ten facts about the author that may or may not be true. Ah, uh, boy, it is hard to see up here. Do you need more light? Should we have more light? More better to the left, man. To the left? That's as to high the right. as it goes. That's as high as it goes. Yeah, yeah see, but, I, but my eyes work yeah, better over yeah, here. Right. Yeah, there is a blind spot up here, definitely. Uh, okay, well, we'll try it anyway. Ten facts about the author that may or may not be true. Number one, on her opulent honeymoon in Bangkok, she repeatedly turned, ooh, yes, she repeatedly turned into a star fruit. Two, she has teeth inside her teeth, inside her teeth. Three, her code name is good golly Miss Anathema. Four, she is a tourmaline necklace. Five, her poems are critiqued by flamingos. Six, she is allergic to anything. Seven, she once attacked her mother with a head cheese. Eight, she once stood shimmering in the Sistine Chapel, naked as a golden egg. Now that one is definitely not true, because I, I wouldn't be caught dead in the Vatican. I just, <laughs> boy, those guys are worse than the Mafia. Number nine, she dreams of a man whose spectacular fingers will open her like a jewel box. And ten, on the last night of her life, she'll be swept away by a tsunami of her own ingenious making. Um, these next two poems are from my um, most recent book, uh, Miss Unthinkable, uh, which you were encouraged to either buy or barter for. I'm a big believer in the barter economy. Um, why didn't I put sticky notes in here? Okay. Um, this first poem is um, was written using a technique called mistranslation. Does anyone not know what that is? Two, two people. Oh, Bob, you know. You've heard this poem before. Okay, one person. Um, it's when you take a poem um, that's in a foreign language that you don't understand, and then you write um, an English poem based on what these four, these meaningless foreign words sort of sound like to you. So there's, yeah, try it sometime. It's very fun. Um, so this is mistranslated from the um, Italian poet Eugenio Montale. It says, uh, three mistranslated love poems. The first one is dark verse. Oh, why are my memories of you sullied with vendettas, lack of ha-ha, and cheap angry treaties? 
dream sequence, cue raucous music. The fugitive god of umbrellas breaks his arm and spends all night sobbing by the gates to the machine that guards the carousel of Saint Excuse Me, while the moon and I eat supper together, devouring everything. Our love was a seesaw of scatology and surprise that made us run from each other like wet cats on pontoons. Now I curse you to God while eating maraschino cherries, my fulminating frog prints, never really mine. And the second one is daily training. The tortoise slow ascent of the hulking sun, the flapping of my sister's very first calendar, revolting memories of Omaha, these are a few of my least favorite things. So I announce my gleeful game plan to kiss you till we fall out the window, till the blood in our veins boils over, till we and we get so hot under our innovative collars, our electric sunglasses short circuit. Hear me whisper through the hole in my fire trap heart as I write you mash notes juicy as mangoes. Be my only whale. Carry me away on the stagecoach. Day after day of your own free will, fuck me till my accessories surrender. <laughs> and the third one is I can say no more. Oh, rest your worn out, nail bitten soul, two pincers away from mine. I'm a famished, leggy woman choking on vows as I splash around in the primeval chowder, refusing to acknowledge God's Timex watch or the silly taunts of my mossy old lovers. Let's dance vibrantly in Hawaii, smoking the strong cigar of love. Let me shimmy in the garden of your eyelashes. Eternity is such a stingy place, nothing to live on but salads of sky. All those candlelit st stairways that, no oh man, all those candlelit stairways that lead nowhere. More than this, I can't say. I'll just polish my gilded heart and leave it at your door so you can study its incandescence like Galileo. Meet me in an hour in the deepest sub-basement of your soul. Heaven's an empty dollhouse where no breeze stirs the bone-white curtains. I'd rather ride the souped-up Camaro of your hips for the rest of my red-letter days, and either you or God can do the rest. Uh, this one is sort of a, um, a feminist riff on um, Wallace Stevens' poem, 13 Ways of Looking uh, at a Blackbird. And I'm a huge fan of Wallace Stevens, but at one point in his life he said something incredibly sexist. He said, the poet looks at the world the way a man looks at a woman. So that kind of fried my feminist bacon a little bit. So this is um, 13 ways of looking at a woman. One. A woman is a luxury country club only riffraff want to join. A woman is a concerto men listen to with their hands. A woman is an apricot poked full of holes. Two, woman, noun, plural, women. One, an adult female human being. Two, women considered as a group womankind, as in, woman feels the invidious distinctions of sex exactly as the black man does those of color. 
Elizabeth Cady uh, Stanton said that. Three, there once was a woman called Tess who sobbed, get me out of this mess. Four, well she was just 17, if you know what I mean. Five, tips, boobs, bubbies, jugs, headlights, knockers, tatas, nays, bazooms, bags, bazongas, coconuts, hooters. Six, a blonde, a brunette, and a red hair, a red, oh man, a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead walk into a bar. None of them is interested in you. <laughs> Seven. Oh man, I have that problem again. Pathology. Left breast, upper inner quadrant, interior depth with calcifications. Stereotactic core biopsy. Ductal carcinoma in situ, solid type, nuclear grade two to three, with associated microcalcifications and focal necrosis. Surgical management is recommended. Eight, who is this woman that flitters past the keyhole as the peeping Tom's knees creak at midnight in the hotel hall? Who were these tiny, grainy girls that glittered in the nickel peep shows, their breasts blurred out, their G-strings fleeting, Endless pairs of eyes upon them like a gauntlet of clammy hands. Nine, I knew a woman lovely in her brains. Ten, I do not know which is worse, woman as goldfish in a gilded bowl or drowning in brackish innuendos. A man whistling at a woman or the moment she explodes in flames. Eleven, stripper Jessica Rogers explains, you know, it's like, I can see the book okay if it's on the left side of the page and not on the right. There's something about the lighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, number eleven, anyway, I'm going to try to read this. Stripper Jessica Rogers explained the difference between working in burlesque and nightclubs and working in Vegas circa 1957 as one of storytelling. They no longer holler, take it off. They want to know why you take it off. <laughs> That's from um, uh, the book Striptease, The Untold History of the Girly Show by Rachel uh, Steer. <coughs> Okay, we're going to get through this yet here. Uh, number 12, dear mom, I am the orchid, a swirl of impossible purple. My freckles transformed into spangles, my peacock petals flirting with the sun. You are the obstinate pot stuck on a stand in the shadows. And finally, 13, once upon a time, there was a woman who was dying of being looked at. So she kicked off her cellophane petticoats, dyed her hair invisible, dabbed her lips with blinding light. The poets could barely glimpse her, lady of the lacuna, Amazon of dazzle, as she flickered out of the landscape vanishing forever out of sight. Oh. Um, I'm going to finish with a couple of new ones. If I can. Well, no, some of them aren't that new. New for me. Um, my big project that I'm working on lately is um, I've been trying to teach myself to write sonnets because I just can't do it. Um, 
And the only way I can do it now is if I use uh, prompts like, um, you know, surrealist uh, writing exercises and uh, good old mistranslation again. So these are two um, mistranslated sonnets. The first one is um, from the Spanish poet Antonio Machado. Pale as a clavicle, pale as a soul, vegetables, liver, and olives stain the kitchen floor. Is it my destiny to drink greasy brandy, to wear my mother's obscene sombrero exactly one year from tomorrow? Oh, if only I could go to dinosaur camp. Yes, I hear you. It's time to kill somebody. Good old God said, blah, blah, blah. Oh, fie on your edited abandon, you poets. Oh, fie on your desperate pencils. It's as clear as the stars in the sea. You've either got a truck or you have it. Pay no attention to death in his inevitable galoshes. <laughs> Um, this one is translated uh, actually from um, parts of several different um, poems in German by um, Rainer Maria Rilke. And there was one that had a title that was something like, I mean, I, I can't speak German, but it was something like An Rande der Nichte, which sounded to me like Anne Rand in the Night. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Okay. Anne Rand talks to herself in the night. Quote, my glass of white wine tastes like diesel, but it's mine. I must be a saint, my breathing a roughshod opera of resplendent gas. Tonight in this dingy English inn, I've murdered my own drunken voice. The traumatic din of the whining world, my criminal legs, my urge to wretch are the sole songs I have left." End quote. This, dear reader, is how love dies. The ether is neither friend nor furor. So build your bed in the museum of omission or an arbor of full-figured ferns. Place your heart on God's nightstand. Dream of wind. <laughs> Um, this poem was written after I saw a really interesting um, exhibit at um, Woman Made Gallery here in Chicago. It was um, a show of erotic and pornographic art by women. It was called The Slippery Slope. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was a very inspiring show, let's say. So, um, I came home and I wrote um, this poem. It's called uh, Love Song Written After Viewing an Exhibit of Erotic Art by Women. Touch me in that place where modesty melts, where lust gapes deep like a crack in the earth. Sweet sinkhole of desire, raw as an oyster inside. Kiss me in places lips aren't supposed to go. Slurp secret sorbet from a quivering cup no bistro would dare to serve. Tonight, let's leave our staid old love waiting for the 1030 bus while we make porno movies with a camera of Vaseline. Susie polishes Peter's golf clubs, the longest gun in the West. The night the rains came to Dusty Gulch as a basement full of perverts yells, yee 
Let me take you where our love wears pasties and a G-string, then flings them off. I'm a woman, I'm an artist, and my canvas is the long, long night. Thank you very much. She has this poem on Ayn Rand, and I know that was ripping on her. But I have to say that I'm wearing a bracelet that's because of Ayn Rand right now on my wrist. <laughs> because I went to see the movies, and this is the medal that was from Atlas Shrugged. Because, well, the philosophy of those things and whatever you say about one of our characters, because I believe, and I think I heard, or I read Charlie Newman saying, Ayn Rand was wrong. I'm like, well, Anybody's philosophy will work if absolutely everyone adheres to it. There you go. Everyone would love communism if everyone completely adhered to it. It doesn't work that way usually, which is where the problems arise. But anywho, but that was very funny. And I put this down because you wrote down the uh, 10 facts about the author that may or may not be true. Yeah. Something to that. And I'm like, in homage to you, I might come up with 10 facts about the author that may have been embellished by the author. Or do something. Like, I'm like, I'm going to have to write that because that's a great idea. That was awesome. Oh, I, I stole that from a poet called Nick Dembski, actually. Okay. Oh. Nick Dembski. I'll have to. <laughs> Nick. De oh, Nick. Nick. D E M S K E. He's great. S K E. Oh, good old Nick. Um, <laughs> sorry. But that was awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. That's great for Nick. What? <laughs> I'm not listening to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that was a phenomenal performance. I'm so glad that you were here because you're never here and you're awesome. And she was highlighted in a thing at uh, Janine and Tom. I remember that. That was very, very cool. And I don't get to go out to many things very often. But it was very cool. And I like hearing you. And you should come here more often. I will try. Now that this is, you're no longer a virgin here. And we can bring spotlights or something. A couple of people complained today yeah, about the, the lighting. The, the lighting is a little strange tonight. I don't know why. I have no I, idea. I have the same problem. You'll have to talk to the locals. Well, I, yeah, I'm not a local, but <laughs> I have no idea what's up with it. But um, that's why I, whenever I do things, I put things in like 24 point type. So it's nice and huge. And so I don't have a problem when I look at it on a page. A little bit of a new one.